<clears throat> welcome, welcome. Hello, church girl. Hello. Hello, beautiful Elaine. How's everyone doing? I'm doing good. Yes, yes. After today, I hope you didn't have a bad day, but if you did, shake the dust, baby. Because we about to go in. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hey, keys. Hey, you guys, could you share this on your page? I'm going to get started in a moment. I just want more people to come on in. Hey, I like lady. Thank you guys for inviting your followers. That's amazing. Hey. I just want to share some things to keep us moving forward. And I know people are probably getting home from work and things of that nature and can't really log on that well. But we're going to move forward anyhow because I don't want to um, take advantage of your time. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we just ask you to touch this scope, oh God, that people will be enlightened and empowered and motivated in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so um, I decided to call this scope take one day at a time simply because that's exactly what we need to do is take one day at a time. Um. I started doing some reflections and thanks for the hearts guys. Thank you. I started doing some reflections. Um, I'm a huge reflector. I don't know if I learned it in school or I'm just naturally analytical, maybe a little bit of both. I don't know if you guys remember in first grade when you had to write in your journal every morning. Uh, well, that's what I had to do in my school and I had went to a Catholic school and it was a private school as well. And um, every morning we had to come in and started in first grade and we had to write in our journals every single morning and um, different subjects. And so I, I believe that was kind of when I started to learn how to be reflective. And so I was reflecting about life, about goals, about goal setting. I started reflecting on, you know, even weekly goals and and daily goals and just looking at where I fell in the mark as far as um, where I placed myself. Did I accomplish a lot? Did I not accomplish a lot? Blah, blah, blah. And I remember I was sitting there and I'm, um, if, you, if you're anything like me, I'm very much, um, I, I'm very hard on myself. So I, I look at things, I say, oh, I should be here in life or I should be here in life or I should be here in life. As so I was looking at things and um, I heard the Holy Spirit say to me so clearly. He said, daughter, take one day at a time. And I wanted to encourage you guys because sometimes we can get frustrated with ourselves, especially when we don't hit the marks that we think we should be making in our lives. We think, oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. If you're like me, I have tons of stuff to do every single day and I'm always moving things in my schedule and I'm always behind schedule mainly because I think I can accomplish more than what is reality for my life but um, you have to look at your goals look at the goals that you want to attain and look at the time frame that you want to attain them and figure out is that really realistic are you setting realistic goals for yourself are you putting too much on yourself? Are you putting too little on yourself? 
you have to continue to move forward but move forward at your pace not your neighbor's pace but your pace and you got to talk to yourself regularly about this because if you don't talk to yourself regularly about setting your goals properly I, I tell you the truth you're gonna get to a point where you feel like you're not hitting your marks in life make sure you evaluate where are where where am i in life what makes sense for me right now and why do you want your goals to happen in a particular time frame you know as women we want things at a certain time frame because we have this whole like marriage kid clock you know bio clock where it's like okay i want to be married by this age and i want to have kids by this age or if you had kids already you know, I want to be married at this age and if you already got married and you're like well you know I want this at this age and 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 we base it on whatever we think the expectation is in our culture and our, our family um same thing with men they they hit marks based on where they feel like they have really hit manhood in their lives but let me express to you that no matter how big your goal is there's only so much you can do in a day your body needs rest. Entertainment is necessary. You need to be able to relax. You need to be able to develop every area of your life, not just your work life. You need to be able to develop in your friendships. You need to be able to develop in um, your other love relationships, your family. You need to be able to develop your spirituality. And a lot of times finding balance in these areas, a lot of us kind of fall short. You know, a lot of us are chasing money for different reasons. And so we get very, very, very busy with working that we don't take time to take care of our bodies, take time to take care of our emotions, take time to take care of love relationships, take time to take care of playtime. We don't do those things because we're constantly work, 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 work. And we're in deficit in every other area of our lives. And though we may look good, all these other areas in our lives creates a very imbalanced person and our perception becomes different it changes it becomes warped it becomes imbalanced some of us spend too much time um in our spirituality there were no earthly good so we're like church 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 but we don't want to come out the heavens to filter any other type of relationship and so we become so spiritual but we're not earthly good and so we need to find balance. So what are your goals in all the areas of your life? What are your goals in your spirituality? What are your goals in your friendships? What are your goals um, in your playtime? What are your goals in your career? Now, mind you, if you spend more time in any one of these areas, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to totally advance in one area. It means that you're going to be imbalanced while you're trying to push and fight for a particular goal, okay? And I've noticed that some people who push and push and push for one area of their life and they're a deficit on the other areas, that doesn't necessarily make them happy. Um, they're accomplished in one area, but very lonely, very sad, very all these other things because they're not fulfilled, in any other or we're struggling because they're not fulfilled in any of these other areas so we have to really work on being balanced are you getting enough rest are you treating your body right um i was reflecting heavily on playtime for myself i've always struggled with you know making time for entertainment ever since i think mm -hmm high school it was I've always been very you know goal oriented career oriented you know if it don't make dollars it don't make sense just very 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 focused in that area and so then when it comes to play time I will always say well my work is fun so I'll do that well when you get to a certain age sometimes that work becomes like work <laughs> and that fun be fun it becomes very segregated and sometimes um, but some people you know depending on the type of job their you know work can be fun in a way and you got to do definitely something that you love in order to find enjoyment but you still need relaxation and so I started making more time for play like oh I need to go out more oh 
I, I don't have a social life because I don't go out anymore. Oh, I don't do this anymore. Oh, I need to make time to do this. And you need to make time for yourself, just like you make time to be there for everyone else. So I want to tell you to make time for what you need to make time for, but take each day at a time. So look at how you assess your day. Now, most of us work long hours or, you know, they spend most of the day working. So you only have a few hours in the evening time to try to, you know, ration out to maybe your family or or your spouse or, you know, um, some people got to take their whole work home with them or whatever. You only have a small amount to ration out, but you have got to somewhere during that week put some other areas in because if you're a deficit, in any one of those areas, it's going to come out. You're going to come out. You could be an amazing executive, but when it comes to relationships, you might be terrible at them because there has been a deficit in development all along. You might be an amazing praise and worship leader, but you are a wretched friend. I'm just going to keep it 100 because you did not develop those skills because you're spending so much time in one area, you're not spending enough time in the other. So I want you to diversify your time. Does that mean that maybe perhaps some of your other goals you may not hit in the time frame that you feel? Well, evaluate why that time frame is so important. Why is it? Um, when we get grown, we'll have, you know... I mean, what are the benchmarks outside of employment? I mean, you just get a lot of family, just yep, 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 yep. But what are these benchmarks that we're putting upon ourselves? What are they for? What kind of career are you chasing? Are they just for you? you got to live life for you. If you're living life to impress others, then that is a rat race that you're not going to win because people are easily on to the next. And you're just not going to win. Okay? So make sure you're living life for you. And what does that look like? This is what I recommend. If you're not happy in your life, in some area, you might be happy in one area, but not happy in another one. I want you to evaluate monthly or even quarterly. I want you to start figuring out in an area of your life what will make you happy. So me being, you know, I'm like one of those organizational chart type of person you know i have to make a visual create a pie chart create a list you know be really uniform about this thing be organized and say okay i got my love life i got my friendships i got my family okay i got my money okay all right and i got my entertainment all right and then your spirituality so there's a lot of areas right and you got to look in if you want to rate yourself one through ten 10 being the best, how would you rate yourself? If you got a low rating in some areas, then you need to tighten up and reorganize your life. Now, I'm going to tell you this. By nature, the money-making side of me fights the philanthropy side of me. They fight each other. You know, my philanthropy part of me wants to give everything away. The money part of me says, mm-mm, child, you got goals. <laughs> And so they're always fighting each other all the time. So I always have to say, okay, let me judge what's most important and find balance. There's some things I just got to do, the philanthropy thing. And there's some other things, baby, I got to charge. I got to do this. I got to make some money. I got to live. You understand what I'm saying? Some things you make a career and some things you make a hobby. And you got to figure out what that is for your life. Now... If the area in your life that you have a deficit in is love, say I have no love relationship. Well, everybody's story is different. You might have come out of a marriage. You might have came out of a relationship. So you're healing and rebuilding. And that area of your life may not include romance right now. It may include you um, taking time to heal. But if you are completely free in that area, then you need to start getting those things in place. Now, I speak to the women, and I wasn't even trying to talk about this right now, but I just feel led in this area. 
I speak to women about positioning themselves um, because a lot of times that the church will tell women that they are not shouldn't position themselves to meet anybody um, because he that findeth a wife, but he's not going to find you if you're too busy. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Um, I'm going to keep it real. I know I done stepped on some toes, but if you're too busy doing a whole lot of things and you're not positioning yourself to be caught, to be found, then it's going to be very hard to meet people. If you're always working, you have to understand that unless you're going to find somebody at work, you may not find anybody to be with. You understand what I'm saying? So you might have to make yourself in a position where you're more social to be able to develop those love relationships that you might be desiring in your life. I'm just going to keep it 100. You don't have to agree with me. But I ain't never met nobody who just fell in love in their rollers, in their house, <laughs> eating hog dash. I ain't never, I ain't, I never heard of that story before, unless they fell in love on love, fell fell in love online. I haven't heard that story before. I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest. So you're gonna have to position everything in your life. Uh, oh Lord, I found my light. Praise God. <laughs> everything in your life, you have to position yourself. So you have to position yourself in your career. Even spiritually, you have to position yourself. You know, take time to read the word. She said, the mailman cute. <laughs> Not if it's a male woman, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but you got to position yourself in that in your dating life as well. Even in friendships, you know, as a leader, it's really hard to develop um, friendships. Um, because, you know, 10... Some friends, you know, I, some leaders are friends with other leaders. Um, but le when you're at high levels of leadership, whether it be in corporate or church or, or you know, whatever it is that you're doing, when you're in a high leadership role, there's people are very, very guarded. You know, they have their community face on, you know, that community face. I'm friendly and I'm warm, but they're really not emotionally available and they're not tangible because they're constantly guarded because of, you know, hurts, pains, situations. They have to protect themselves. So it's really hard for leaders to develop real, true relationships because there's not a big pool to pull from. But what I have come to learn over the years in developing friendships is you have to determine what it is that you want in a friend. Write these qualities down. Now, as you know, as as people, we write down who we want in a spouse. We write these down. Oh, I'm looking for this. I want this. This and this. But how many times have you written? Um, you know, what do I want in a friend? A platonic relationship. Have you actually assessed what it is that you wanted and you needed in a friendship? Um, you know, or are you very organic with it? Well, they seem cool, so you know, sometimes that's not good enough. What are your qualifications and what, as a friend, are you bringing to the table? And you have to put that in. Are you, and what types of friends are you looking for? Are you just looking for professional friends? Or are you looking for somebody that you can really let your hair down with? Or do you want both? Keep it 100 because you need some type of friendship. And those things take time to build, but you have to position yourself to do it. And guess what? You want to take one day at a time all right so i talked about money already everybody knows you got to make your money you got to build your career let me talk to the people who have worked to build their career and their career has taken a shift it's not exactly where they wanted it to be or they've had to find the career that they're looking for it hasn't worked or they have the career they love it but they still broke i need to talk to people who are just not happy with the condition of their career so what do you do now you assess where you want to be come on somebody assess where you want to be and why you want to be there and what is it do you want to be doing and you assess that and you're gonna have to at least assess that once a year because things change opportunities come that can change your mindset you know um what you, you say you were doing something you realize you didn't like it it wasn't for you or it didn't bring in the money that you thought it was going to bring in so you got to shift things come on or you notice hey 
this is not this is bringing in some but i need something else to help me bring in money so you have a couple of things going on come on somebody so now you have to assess where am i with this should i keep moving on in this what's the point if i keep doing this what happens if i stop doing this what happens what is it is it something i want to tell people about or is it something i want to be quiet about <laughs> i'm just going to be honest with you Assess your career. Assess it and figure out where you are with it. Because many of us who have had a career for a number of years get very frustrated somewhere in our career because we want to move forward. And maybe we're just not where we want to be right now. But with any of that in your goal setting, it still means taking one day at a time. Take one day. So with your career, figure out one thing you can do to advance your career every day. If one thing is having a list of things you want to accomplish and you taking one of those things off the list and completing that, then you're one thing closer to what you want to do and accomplish and keep moving forward. I noticed one of the biggest strengths in a business, a company, a career is consistency. So if you're consistent, even if things are just plucking along, I say that when things are kind of snailing along, guess what? You're still consistent. You're still going at it. You're still doing it. You're still moving forward. You're still building and you're definitely still learning. You have to keep moving forward one thing at a time. What are you doing to build your social life? Because everybody is body and soul. You just can't be all spiritual and don't think you don't need uh, friends in your life. You can't be all spiritual and think, well, that's all I want is my dog. I'll be fine. Okay, after a while. But when you heal, hopefully you do heal. After a while, you're going to want him in contact. Come on, somebody. Come on. What you going to do? Are you anywhere closer to meeting the type of professional circles that you want to be in? What if you want to change your circle? What if you say, you know what? I've outgrown the circle that I'm in. I'm the smartest one in my circle. I need a new circle. What are you going to do? You're going to position yourself into another circle. I remember I was looking around and I was like, you know what? I don't really like my circle, so I'm ready to change it. And I started digging for other places to be and I started going different places and meeting different people and um, aligning myself with professional organizations and con and, and going to um, uh, events, even like, like bowling and stuff like that with these other professional organizations because I wanted a different quality of relationships. I even decided to contact some people I went to high school and college with that are very, you know, um, doing some things that, that I wanted to do and start working on developing those relationships further because I wanted a different pool of friends. So are you doing something to reach those goals that you really want to launch? What if it's your health? I didn't touch health yet. All right. So what about health? What do you need to do with that? One step at a time. Usually if people want to gain weight or lose weight, they want it all at one time, but you want to do it one step at a time. I've noticed um, and I've, I've been losing weight and I've noticed, and I really just got real focused is that every choice, every moment has to do with, um, how successful I am in my weight loss journey. So if I just blow it and start eating crazy, even if it's one meal, I just forfeited that day of losing the weight that I needed to lose. I forfeited how many ounces I could have lost that day. I forfeited all of that because of a choice that I made not to work on me. But every time I eat a salad, every time that, you know, I cut my portions and every time I start making healthy choices for me, I look for the results. I look for the reward at the end because I made a choice to change my life with that one meal one choice to change my life with that one exercise activity I made a choice to change my life and every day I decided to make a choice to change my life 
So I want to tell you that big changes typically don't happen overnight unless you are very talented in winning the lottery. And even then, there's some really tragic stories on people who won the lottery because they weren't prepared for an advancement like that. I've heard horrible stories about people who won the lottery because they weren't prepared. There is a blessing in growing slowly because you're able to mature, prepare, and plan for your prosperity. So one day at a time, even though we want the kaboom and we sell everybody on the kaboom moment, oh, we want the kaboom. And people are like, yes, thank you, Jesus, for kaboom. Yes, we want the big bang. Yes, everything happened overnight. Yes, and we want that. But I guarantee you there's small miracles every day and taking one day at a time, making small choices toward each of your, each of your goals. And later on, you're going to find amazing results you look down the line and you realize it's amazing i always talk about my hair and i'm gonna say this and then i'm just gonna um press out and i'm gonna go because i did say i wanted a quick scope my hair was so short my locks were short and um when i tell you and i've told i've told the story before but i'm gonna keep telling my story about my hair um my my locks were short and um what happened was I had a perm and I had the wrong person doing touching my head and whatever my hair broke off because I had very long gorgeous hair at that point and I went somebody went somewhere to get my hair done and I shouldn't have went there and blah 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 so anyway I could not grow my hair seven years go by and my hair breaks off that it only goes to the top of my ear and my hair was down to the middle of my back thick gorgeous hair beautiful and I, you know, started wearing wigs and extensions and so on because my hair was so short. And I wasn't used to having, you know, I, I used to have short hair bows because I decided I wanted it to be short, not because it broke off. So I always knew how to grow my, grow my hair. So I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, daughter, if you go natural, I'll give you your length back. And so I did. I went natural. And... I've been natural for seven and a half years and I got far more hair <laughs> than I've, I've, I can remember having. And my hair goes all the way down to my behind. And I'm like, like, wow, you know, the Lord told me, he says, if you, if you do this, then, you know, your hair is going to get long. Watch this. It didn't happen overnight. My hair was short. My locks were short. And, um, I just remember people dogging me out about my hair uh, when I first got my locks and, you know, people making fun of me and, and saying stuff because they didn't understand the vision. And, um, you know, I mean, literally just trying to, this one lady was trying to undo my hair. She hated it so much. And what it was a coworker and it was just awful. And, um, I just remember everybody saying, I liked your hair before I, I even had parishioners tell me, I liked your hair before. I don't like your hair like that. You know, pastor, your hair is ugly. They would tell you some crazy stuff like that. They're like, your hair is ugly. I don't like that. You know, I want, you know, I like that wig you wore earlier. That was a pretty wig. Why don't you put that back on? And um, it hurt my feelings greatly, but I ignored everybody. I did not wear a wig as I was transitioning. I did not do that. I just continued to do what I could to make my hair, you know, put barrettes and flowers in it and, and curl it up and, you know, to try to make it pretty. And I was extremely heavy set. I weighed way more weight than I weigh now with short hair. So my face looked more full than I wanted to. And I just felt very unattractive. And that's when, honestly, I met my husband during my hair trans transition because my last perm I put in my head was the day before my wedding day and I said this is going to be the last perm and I grew my hair out after that and locked six months later so my husband saw me through the transitioning and everything but he knew that if I let my hair grow you know it was going to get long one day so he continued to encourage me and kept telling me you know even when everyone was telling me my hair was ugly my husband told me I was beautiful even when they were telling me I needed my perm back my husband said I love your next year natural hair texture and even though he didn't care for how my transition looked 
he just kept encouraging me even when he caught me sneaking in the cabinet to put some perm in my hair ah he the lord would have him to walk in the bathroom that very moment where i was gonna put some perm in my hair and he said step away from the creamy crack <laughs> And he says, you're going to throw this stuff away or you're going to give it away. And I ended up giving the, this big old bottle of perm to a parishioner. And I had to get rid of like all my stuff because I was so, yeah, I was very busty. And so he said, look, I'm with you. Just continue the journey. It's going to be okay. And now I'm in love with my hair. You know, he's in love with my hair. I just went to my 20th high school reunion and people couldn't keep their hands out my locks. I'm like, okay, Jesus. <laughs> Tell me, oh, I just love your hair. But I remember a day when people told me I looked ugly with my hair. So I want to encourage anybody who feels like they're in a situation in their life, whether it be career, business, relationships, anything like that. You write good things to come to those who wait. Whatever it is, take one day at a time. And even though it might not look good in that moment, it might not feel good in that moment. You assess, you look at your goals, you set them. If your goals are not working or not realistic, you rework them, you reflect, you, re you evaluate, and you encourage yourself, and you keep going. Do you understand? One day at a time, because one day you're going to look up and realize you have everything you ever wanted. Don't stop. Every day, work towards your goal. Every day. And one day, you'll have everything that you want. Okay? So, it's a little just quick message. I eat from the same table. So, if you got inspired, I know I did. And I just wanted to share it with you guys. You know, there's some videos that... Oh, bless you, Keys. I don't really share on Facebook Live like that, you know. Um, but some stuff I just say from my scope peeps. You know what I mean? And I may put it on YouTube or whatever, but I just feel like there's just something I just wanted to give you all. You know what I mean? So, um, I love y'all. I hope you were inspired. I want you to be encouraging. Your all right. I promise. I look at my hair, and I'm inspired every day. I said, this is what happens when you take one day at a time. Okay? So do it, y'all. I'm expecting to hear some miracles. I'm expecting for y'all to tell me a few months from now, I got the job. I started a business. My business is off the ground. I lost 10 pounds. <laughs> Whatever it is. I got a boyfriend. I got a husband. I got a wife. I got, <laughs> I got some kids. I'm having a family. I'm, I want to hear it all. Because I think it's awesome. So I love y'all. I bless y'all. And that's it. Alright. Oh, as you guys know. Well, some of y'all don't know. But on Facebook, I launched my counseling ministry. I relaunched it. Um, it's called Restoration Biblical Counseling. And um, I want you to inbox me on Facebook. And um, y'all put my Facebook. Somebody put my Facebook up there. Apostle hyphen Martina Elway Hill. That's Apostle hyphen Martina Elway Hill. And I want you to, if you if you're looking for someone to help walk you through your healing, consider me. It's forty dollars an hour. Um, I'm not a licensed therapist, but I am um, a minister of the gospel, and I've been in ministry for twenty years. Thank you, woman of God. Thank you for putting that up. Um, and I've helped people, especially leaders, um, encourage them and make them feel loved and, and a listening ear, somebody to pray for you. If you're looking for pastoral counseling, consider me. Um, I, I tell you right now, I speak into your life in Jesus name. Things will shift and change for the better. You know, I always say, I pray for you. You pray for me. Amen. So God's going to do something. If you're looking for a counselor, consider me, um, Go on to my Facebook, inbox me. I'm taking appointments, okay? I love y'all with the love of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I'm looking forward to working with some of y'all as well.
Amen. So spread the word. All right, y'all. I'm gone. And I don't know. I just feel a shift. So it's got to be something going on with one of y'all up here in Jesus' name. I love it. All right. Hey, Pastor Shelly. Hey. All right, y'all. I'm about to go. I love y'all. And I'll catch y'all later. Bless you. Bye-bye.